as you can see, this is a first webinar about Organ on a Chip and Flamingo project. And um, I'm super happy today to have the lead of the project, Dr. Annalisa Chiochetti with me, uh, with whom I will talk all things about immunology, Organ on a Chip, and maybe a little bit about the future of medicine, because I guess this is uh, a thing that's going to be um, important for all of us, for our health and, and our um, treatments in the future. Um, this, is a this is a first part of six webinars that we will do in the next two months with different researchers that are part of the Flamingo project. And um, first of all, let me just quickly introduce uh, Annalisa. Annalisa is a professor of uh, immunology from University of uh, Piedmont in Italy, and she's the lead on the project Flamingo. Otherwise, she has a really, really big expertise in immunology, especially in autoimmune um, diseases. And um, uh, she's an MD and also she has a PhD. She is very much focused on research. She also teaches and is an author of more than 75 um, um, scientific publications, as well as uh, has three patents. And um, to start with, so I'm not going to be uh, boring you with, with this long introduction. Uh, Annalisa, you are an immunologist. Uh, how did you find yourself in this field? How, where, where does the interest uh, to go into immunology come from? Thank you very much, Seria, for uh, this invitation. I'm very happy to be here and to share uh, the Flamingo project with, uh, with you. Uh, actually, how, why I'm, I'm in immunology is a long story. It has been a long journey in the sense that uh, I started, uh, let's say, at the age of uh, five, six years old, uh, thinking and saying that I want to become a medical doctor. And uh, when I grew up, uh, every time someone was asking me, you know, what do you want to do when you will be uh, big? And I was saying, OK, I want to be a medical doctor. And then when I reached the, the age and I could uh, go to university, uh, I wanted to be a medical doctor. But unfortunately, uh, my parents were changing uh, town. And so we had a big mess. And so the first year I couldn't go uh, and ins inscribe to, to medicine. And so I decided, okay, just not to lose a year, I will, be, I will do biology, you know, because some exams are the same. And so after the first year, I was there saying, mm, but, you know, studying six years and then to specialize, and then it's a long, long time. And so I changed up my mind and I decided I want to be a biologist. And so I had a PhD, a PhD in uh, biology. But then, you know, uh, actually, I wanted to be a medical doctor, you know, to, to deal with diseases, but it was impossible at that time in my mind. And so I decided to go to agriculture because there I could study in a department of uh, uh, vegetal pathology. And so I started to study fungi that are pathogen for some cultivar, you know, and uh, it was really, really fascinating for me. And... Um, I went to doing a postdoc on this topic uh, in Paris, okay, and unfortunately that year I had a very nice project because the aim was to identify which gene is uh, responsible for the pathogenicity, okay, of these uh, fungi, and so I really worked a lot for one year, but I unfortunately I had no results at all, no results, and so it was not possible because all experiments were done well, but I had no, no results. And so we send back the, the, the fungi to Italy saying, but are they are really pathogen? And they told me, oh, we made a mistake. We gave you a non-pathogen. And so I, I, I worked for one year for nothing at all. And I was 30 and I think I thought that my, my life was end there because, you know, after one year I had no, no lab to go in and nowhere to go. And uh, that's why I, I went to have, uh, you know, a chat with a friend of mine in Novara, because in Novara, that is in the north of Italy, there is this new medical university. Um, it was a small one. And so I said, OK, I will have a, a look there. And there I met, uh, you know, a professor in immunology that uh, would have become my, my mentor. And he proposed me a beautiful project that was to identify a gene associated with autoimmune diseases. And then I fell in love with immunology and actually I became an immunologist. 
Oh, that's a really interesting story. It's also quite encouraging for all young uh, researchers or scientists that might listen, because I think everyone every now and then finds themselves in like, oh, what am I doing? Something is not working when you do science. So this is like, it's it's really nice yeah, to hear. It's so, really, yeah, it's true. Really had that kind of experience as well. So um, in the last two years, I was, uh, I work also as a science journalist and I was covering pandemic quite a lot. So we all learned somehow. And there is this quote from a famous uh, science journalist, Ed Young, who said like, basically immune system is just really complicated. <laughs> and um, I feel quite inspired that you are trying to put a little bit of it on, an, on a chip, which is like seems like a really <laughs> a crazy idea. Um, and and um, uh, there definitely still are a lot of things that we don't understand about immune system. And what parts you already mentioned a little bit that you focused on a specific gene connected to some diseases do you focus on, on in your research work? Yeah, let's say that uh, uh, you are right. In, 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 he was right. The immunology is, is complicated. The immune system is complicated. Um, the reason, uh, I, if you give me two minutes, I just try to explain why it's so complicated, you know, because all our body is done of different organs and each of these organs has got a, a, a function, okay, and it, it is connected to the other. So we know that, I don't know, the liver has some function, the heart has different function and so on, okay. Each of these uh, 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 organs are composed by different cells, okay, it's very specialized cell. The immune system is exactly the same, is an organ and is uh, composed by cells that are specialized for their function. These cells are white blood cells in the blood. You know that the blood has got red blood cells, platelets, and then white blood cells. So when we say white blood cells, leukocytes, we refer to the cells of the immune system. But uh, unfortunately, there are lots of, unfortunately, no, but I mean, the, the complicated thing is that there are several different uh, uh, cells within the immune system. So basically they do different things and also the same cell can do different things depending on which are the cells in the surrounding, how is the body going on. And what we know now of the immune system is really, really a little. So one fascinating thing of being an immunologist is that you've got lots of things to discover. You know, it's a really uh, emerging field as we are on the tip of the iceberg, let's say. So uh, coming to my work, uh, I work on autoimmune diseases which are diseases of the immune system, meaning that somehow the immune system makes some mistakes. Usually the immune system is there to protect our body from pathogen, you know, viruses, bacteria, fungi, but sometimes it makes a mistake. And in autoimmune disease, the mistake is that instead of recognizing pathogen, it recognizes our tissue. And so it starts aggressing like if it was an infection. And so this makes damage in our uh, in our body. Okay. And uh, about one of these kind of diseases, we will talk later. But first, I just want to quickly introduce Flamingo Project. This is the this is financed from European Horizon 2020 projects. It's one of the projects focusing on on health, uh, and I think it has quite a big potential to be important organ on a chip as well as just this part of Flamingo for the future of medicine. Um, and um, could you just tell us a little bit what is actually the Flamingo Project? What are you proposing? and um, yeah yeah sure I if, if I can I will just uh, um, share my screen the uh, screen with you I prepared a couple of slides if it, if uh, can you see the my yes, screen perfect. Okay. perfect so uh, let's say uh, before going to the flamingo project I just uh, uh, wanted to, to introduce uh, uh, my center the, the place where I work so we already said that is in Novara in Piedmont, which is in the north of Italy, okay? And uh, um, this is my center. It's a center for, uh, for translational research on autoimmune and allergic disease. Now, I, I want to present the center for this reason. Um, this center has been conceived uh, looking at the, the big centers on cancer. 
because we, ha we have improved a lot in knowing uh, immunology and also pathogenicity of uh, uh, the cancer because a big center like this has been built. And what is the characteristic of this center? Is that they put together different realities. So in my center, we've got a block with the clinics. So obviously it is devoted to autoimmune and allergic disease, but patients, instead of going into the hospital, they come into our center to, to meet the doctors. Then we've got a, a second floor in which there, is, there are the wet lab where we do the research. So we have the samples of the patient. This is uh, stocked into our next generation biobank. So all the samples are stored there. Not only the sample, let's say blood sample or biopsies, but also all the information of the patient. That day that I had that sample, were you sick, were you okay? What was going on, which was the therapy and so on. And so we've got the wet lab and now I will just tell you two things on the wet lab. And then in the first floor, we've got the business incubator because, and this is one of the things that European projects are really devoted to, is once you find some novelties doing research, you need to take them to the, to the market. Otherwise, you know, we discover a lot of things. We publish a nice paper, but then the, that stop. And this is not a way to uh, taking really uh, to having an impact uh, from your um, results. Now, let's say that our center is devoted to study the patient samples with an omic approach. So let's say now it, it's a bit complicated it's just to show different instrumentation and facilities we have that enable to study in a very um, on frontiers, let's say, way, the samples of the patient in a way that in a hospital, obviously, you cannot uh, study. Now, coming to our Flamingo, because the question actually was about uh, what is the Flamingo project? And yeah, exactly. Flamingo, yeah. So uh, I decided to, to put this is uh, the Flamingo, of our, uh, is the logo of our uh, project. As you may see, Flamingo, okay, <laughs> it's a bird, of course. Um, but uh, I, I also put the title because the title somehow can be informative. Um, let's say that Flamingo is the, the acronym from uh, pathobiology to Synovia on chip, driving rheumatoid arthritis to the precision medicine goal. Now, here we see a Flamingo. He's got a problem in his joint <coughs> because this joint is inflamed. And actually, our acronym wants to mean inflammation that goes away. So Flamingo. Uh, now, obviously, to, to describe the project, uh, we need to first know what is rheumatoid arthritis and uh, uh, what is a precision medicine somehow. So um, I, I just want to make a short introduction on what... This is exactly my next question. Uh, okay. <laughs> what is rheumatoid arthritis? <laughs> yeah, it, it, so let's say that it is an autoimmune disease. Uh, it is a, a situation in which we've got a chronic inflammation uh, of the joint, uh, so what we usually call arthritis. Now, if we have a look to this uh, picture, we can see a joint. So a joint is uh, where two different bones uh, uh, come together. Uh, these bones are connected by a synovial membrane, which is a thin membrane of cells that are there for one specific reason, meaning to secrete uh, into the joint uh, the synovial uh, fluid, which is a lubricant uh, that will allow the movement without pain. Okay, this is the normal condition. What happens into rheumatoid arthritis? It happens that the immune system, by making a mistake, starts to aggress the synovial membrane. And so it uh, starts an inflammation that... Uh, causes these uh, cells to proliferate a lot. And you see in the, in the right part of this uh, drawing, you can see this big uh, inflammation with a lot of cells that are uh, producing lots of inflammatory uh, mediators, okay? And, and so the patient will feel pain, will have a swollen joint, but uh, since it is chronic, as the diseases progress, uh, this inflammation starts to erode the cartilage and the bone. And so it will take, as you, as you see in this part of the, of the picture, 
to the deviation of the joint. Uh, and so people will suffer not only pain, not only swollen joint, but also a deformation. Now, this is rheumatoid arthritis. Um, there are several, let's call them unmet needs. Flamingo wants to address especially one of these. Um, so let me try to explain how uh, a patient goes uh, through this disease. Because uh, first of all, it takes a long time to get the diagnosis because it's not easy. We don't have a biomarker that say, okay, if you have this, you will have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and so this uh, takes time. And during this time that I don't know if it is rheumatoid arthritis, this inflammation goes on. Then once you have the diagnosis, you will go, you need to have a treatment, of course. On the market, there are lots of different uh, drugs that can be, that can, uh, let's say, um, treat those kind of conditions, but they are effective, but they are effective only in a small part of the population with rheumatoid arthritis. And unfortunately, at the moment, we don't know, we don't have biomarkers saying this patient will respond to this treatment. So how do we manage this disease? So patient has a diagnosis and every patient will start by using methotrexate, okay? On these patients, average 40% of them will not respond, which means that after six months, they will go back to the rheumatologist and say, okay, I still have pain and I still have a swollen joint. So methotrexate is not okay, but six months have passed. So we go to a second line treatment. And on this second line, 40% of that patient will not respond. So this is to make, to, to try to think that some patients succeed immediately, but some other starts cycling from one uh, drug to another until they find them. Some of them, there is a small proportion, let's say 15, 20% of the total who, who have no, no treatment at all. This means that we cannot stop the disease because just one last thing, we cannot cure rheumatoid arthritis with these uh, drugs. But uh, if we select the good one immediately, we are able to stop the disease. So the disease do not progress and, and, uh, and the patients feel better. Because mm. in this way, if you are using so many medications, you may be mitigating the disease, but it doesn't stop it. And, and even mitigation, it's probably not really yeah. strong. Yeah, this is this is... You can see how 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 big impacting can have uh, on people's life. And do you have maybe numbers of how many of uh, patients with rheumatoid uh, arthritis are there? Like let's say in Europe or maybe in Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are at least let's say that is one percent average of uh, population. It's three million in Europe, mm -hmm. so it's a big uh, problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. um, so, so I think now it's clear why you focused on this disease uh, with with such a like unsuccessful treatment currently. Uh, but what what do you want to to improve, and and how can you improve this? Um, so let's say that uh, um, there are lots of uh, the scientific community is trying to address uh, all these uh, unmet needs uh, with uh, what we usually call precision medicine. So let me just uh, make a point of where we are now. Let's yeah. say that we, we want to develop a new drug for rheumatoid arthritis. We've got evidence that maybe some, some molecule can be a good target, okay? We develop it. And how can we prove if this is useful or not? Usually we start by using cells in culture. Cells in culture, for example, synovial cells in this case, put in culture and we treat them with the drug. This is very easy to do, but obviously cells in culture are not complex enough to recapitulate what happens really into the joint. And so to go to a more complex and physiologic situation, we go to animal models, what we call preclinical models, because in this way, the joints are really a joint, they are complicated, they are, they, there is a new system and so on, and we can treat, but obviously, animals are not humans. So it is more complex as an as a experimental model, but it's not usual. And so at the end, we go to what we call 
clinical trial. This is a randomized clinical trial. So I take 100 patients with rheumatoid arthritis. I divide it into two groups. Now here I've got the healthy uh, subject just to uh, test if it's uh, toxic. In any case, I take 100 patients. I divide it into two groups. One I treat and one I don't treat. What, what is the, the results of this uh, testing? What I said before. So let's say that uh, among these, 60% will respond to the drug, but there is a part that will not respond. If you see in my drawing, there are different color for each of these patients because each of them has got a sort of different rheumatoid arthritis, okay? So what is the aim of the scientific community in this moment? Is to go to precision medicine. What is precision medicine? Is that I don't treat patients like if they were all the same, but I study these patients very, very deep. So I take their samples and for example, I make genomics, which means that I take their DNA and I study and I sequence all the genes that are inside to see what is different among them. This is one. And oh, there I can do transcriptomics. So let uh, have a look to how the cell work and which kind of protein or RNA they express. And then by putting all this information to, and then I can also add information on the lifestyle, uh, on the food and uh, how they eat uh, and all those stuff. So I take big data, big information. I put them all together. And at the end, I will come out with uh, saying that this population is made by black. And then there is a second population made by green and then by orange and then by uh, yellow. And for each of them, I will ha have a, a right treatment. So precision medicine is, I study in deep the patients to give to each their own uh, treatment. We all believe that this will be successful and that we will arrive probably in 10 or 20 years to really have drugs that are effective because we are able to identify those biomarkers that are important. So the Flamingo project is something different because in my mind, in 20 years, we will be here but we don't have 20 years. We've got lots of patients that, are, uh, that need some solution now. And so the aim of the Flamingo project is a little bit different. And so it says, okay, I will not go, I know that I've got black, I've got green and I've got yellow patients, but I don't go into details uh, searching for some difference. But instead I try to make uh, a culture of them cells. So I take the cells biopsies from the patient. So each patient will have its own cells. And then I culture them in this chip. Since these chips are very small, I can make from a small biopsies a lot of different chips, a lot of chip. And so I can test in the same time, in the same moment, all the drugs that I've got on the market. Just to give you an idea, if the flamingo will succeed, we can. if I take a biopsy today from a patient, within one month, I will have tested all the drugs in the market and I can say, okay, this is a green patient, I need to give the green drug. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one month is enough for like from biopsy to growing cells on the organ on a chip and then already to seeing effect from drugs. This is what we expect from, and this is what we are planning to do in this uh, proposal. Yes, because organ on chip are uh, solutions that are able to answer to all these. Uh, so they give complexity, but they are mm -hmm. to do. Let's mm -hmm. see. And if I just go a little bit more into the details about organ on a chip, we are talking about organ. We are not just talking about cells, right? This is special. Yeah. What is special about it? Like... Why okay. is it organ? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's go to what organ on chip are. So I put some uh, slides just to, to show you what we are talking about. Unfortunately, um, I, I don't have our chip now to show because I, I would have liked to, the, to show you. But in any case, these are uh, different chips in the uh, that you can find in the literature. So it's a very small, uh, very small device. And as you said, actually, it is a cell culture. So the objective is to culture cells. But 
when we usually culture cell, we culture them in a 2D monolayer, which means that all the cells are attached to a plate, one next to the other. But this is not physiologic because no matter who, what organ, the cells are distributed in a 3D configuration. Not only they are in a 3D configuration, but they also connected with other cells that compose an organ. So let's say that when you put cells in culture, you put one cell type. When you want to make an organ, you need to put different cell types, okay? And so uh, uh, the idea of organ on chip is exactly this, is to try to put different cells that are within an organ into the same culture, not in a monolayer, but as they are in vivo. So we don't want to make the same shape of the organ, but we want that the physiology is there. Now, since I know it's complicated, when I started to write the flamingo, I had no idea what organ on chip. I prepared the slide that up to me is uh, really, really interesting and it is uh, explicative. This is uh, one of the first organ on chip that has been done. And the idea is to make an organ on chip for lungs. Now, the organ on chip is done in this way. Uh, so it, it has nothing to do with the shape of the lung. But uh, now I will show you how uh, by making this. Uh, no, it doesn't work. Why does it work? Oh, no. There is a video here. Uh, unfortunately, it is not going. This is a pity. Anyway. Um, we will share it in the comment under the video. Ah, okay. Afterwards, okay. for anyone who is interested. Okay. Uh, but just to explain you here, what they've done, you can see it here. There was a membrane, a porous membrane, and the, the and there were two different cell types. One were the lung cells. The other one were uh, blood cells, okay? Because this is what happens in the lung. You know, you breathe, and so you, the air comes in, and then the oxygen needs to go to the to the bloodstream, okay? And so what, what they did is exactly the same. This uh, two different chamber. In one there was there was the air, and in the other one there was the blood. And this was relevant for what you can. And, and moreover, there was also a vacuum as you may see here, that can stretch this, the, this cell because it's what when you breathe, your, uh, you, you make a stress to the cells in the, in the lung. And then when you breathe again, you, you... So, so there was a pressure inside mimicking exactly what, what happens when you breathe. And this was relevant not only to study the physiology of breathing, but also because in the air you can put bacteria or you can put viruses, and in the blood, and so you can study how the blood, the blood cells uh, can go to the recognize the pathogen, aggress them, and so on. Uh, I, I really am sorry that you cannot see because it was uh, self-explicative and it was uh, really interesting to see. I'm sure um, our listeners and viewers will 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 watch it uh, later. It's, yeah. it's really really an interesting. So, let, let, let's say that. I oh, know it's going. Oh, it's showing now. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Probably, I, I just uh, so this is how it's done. Now you, it shows you in a section. You see, there are two. There is a membrane here in which you can see the cells, and you can see them on top. And it will be uh, epithelial cell of the lung, and you can um, also put them on the bottom, and is uh, the cell of the of the vessel. You know. Um, and then there is this vacuum channel that mimics uh, the breathing. And so this makes, uh, you know, it's an organ because there is uh, both uh, the alveoli and also the, the, the blood with all the cells inside. There was air passing uh, like when you breathe and the, there is this stretch. And uh, the application, let's say, of this organ are different because uh, as it is shown now, if you flux bacteria within the air, this bacteria will attach as it does when you have an infection and white blood cell will uh, uh, sense this uh, bacteria and will start to extravasate, go and recognize. And this allows you not only to culture cell, but to culture them in a relevant way, like if it was the organ. Okay, so uh, let's say that uh, on the market, there are lots of different organs on chip so uh, that have been done to understand either physiology or uh, the disease. 
But when we started writing, uh, and also now, uh, the, the Flamingo project, there was no organ on chip for the joint. So since our target organ is the joint, to, to try <laughs> to do what we want, we, we're supposed to have a joint on chip. Now, um, just to go uh, shortly into the detail of what we plan to do, this is the joint. You see this is a bone and cartilage. This is the synovial fluid. This is the synovial sheet with uh, the synovial side and the blood vessel, of course, important because the immune system can arrive into the tissue, into the tissue through uh, blood vessels. So what we plan to do is to exactly recapitulate all these different tissue in a relevant way within the chip. So we will have a, a, a part dedicated to the bone that will be connected to the cartilage that will be uh, dispersed into this uh, synovial fluid. Here we will have the synovial membrane. And then on this side and also in this one, we will have a blood vessel. So really a tubular uh, vessel-like structure in which the cells, uh, white blood cells, uh, will be uh, fluxed. Now, as you may see in this uh, different uh, cross-section view, there is also under the synovial fluid a pressure that mimics the walking because when you move uh, the walking or uh, the movement, let's say, of the joint, because when you move them, there is a, a stretch in this uh, condition. And so the idea is exactly to uh, try to see when we put into this blood vessel new drugs, uh, what happens to the, the inflamed uh, synovium. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I also put the concept because uh, there are, uh, let's say, some novelties uh, in this uh, project uh, related to the fact that, uh, uh, let's say, two or three. One is technological because uh, we will make this, uh, since it is a compli complicated organ on chip, we, we conceived uh, to produce it as uh, Lego bricks. Uh, you know, uh, Lego bricks, you have different bricks and you can build them together. So we will uh, start by doing the blood vessel, the osteochondral unit and the synovial unit independently, make them work because they are also by themselves complicated, and then we will assemble them all together. Obviously, to give the complexity of each of this tissue, we will have a bioprinter, which is an instrumentation that allow you to uh, put the cells in culture in certain disposition, in a 3D disposition. This is one of the uh, novelties. The second one, very important, is that we will not start uh, from, uh, let's say, uh, cells in culture, uh, shall, let, let's say cell lines, but we will start from patient's biopsy. So really we will have uh, from different patients, uh, different biopsies and so different organs on chip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I can already add a teaser for an, one of the next events. We will talk about 3D bioprinting as well, which is an important part of the Flamingo project. Yeah. And, and there is one more thing here, here that I see on, the, on this, on this uh, slide with the concept at a glance. Um, one is that um, you, you create uh, this artificial environment, cells one after another, it's an organ, and you also need to somehow um, have a control of this environment or sense this environment in a way. And for this, as far as I understand, you use lab on a chip, right? Or like, yeah, yeah? what, what yeah, is no, no, it's true. Let's say that we use different ways. One is the lab on a chip. So let me just explain what a lab on a chip is. Um, so the chip is this form. Uh, microfluidic mini, means that uh, um, uh, the nutrients are continuously filled inside this chamber, like it happens with blood vessels that continuously take into our organs uh, the nutrients. Um, and so we will have nutrients going into the chip and nutrients that come out from the chip. Uh, this uh, medium that comes out from the chip will also retrieve from the chip, like uh, our vessel do, all uh, uh, is, uh, lots of information, lots of mediators that meanwhile the tissue is producing. So uh, what we retrieve from the chip will be analyzed on a lab on chip. This will be done automatically, automat see, uh, automatically. I yeah, automatically. Uh, yeah, just, 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 
And so we can have, uh, let's say, a uh, um, real time uh, uh, advice of what is going on. Uh, for example, I give the drug and I can see if cells are dying, not dying, if they are producing uh, some uh, mediators or, or whatever. And this is one aspect. There is also another aspect. Let me see if I've got, the, yeah, uh, this is, uh, uh, let, let's say, the technology that we are putting on in our chip. So we, we are designing the chip because we need a new configuration. So we have got bioengineer that have drawn uh, these channel in which we feed the cells. Then we've got the cells from the patients. We've got, we have this bioprinting. We will have uh, a webinar on it. And then we have sensors. Now, what are microsensors? They are some particles that have some characteristic, I will tell you, that we put inside uh, these culture together with the cells. And that will allow us to understand how the cells are performing. For example, are they good? Is the oxygen inside the cells good? Uh, are they, have they any problem? Uh, is the pressure we are giving too much? So uh, these are particles that mimic a cell, but uh, for example, they are fluorescent, as you may see here. And uh, let's say that if oxygen is okay, there is no fluorescence. If oxygen is missing, these uh, particles start to be red. And so we can easily understand what is going on inside our chip. It's really fascinating because in the beginning, you started this story with where you work and what your center does and how you have all these different expertise of people and also patients there. And now when you explain the whole story, it really shows the importance of having all that in one place so you can follow through with everything, with the whole treatment. Yeah, I think that this is really uh, an important point. I stopped my, my yeah, you can stop. yeah, I come back to you. Um, yeah, it is a very, uh, really an important point uh, um, because having there all the expertise now. Obviously, we don't have the expertise now. The aim of the flamingo is uh, to put together expertise that are dispersed into Europe. Each one, you know, we've got a group that is very good with uh, uh, bone and cartilage, another group that is very good in sensor, another group that is very good in doing the platforms, okay? Uh, we are, let's say, good in doing the synovial, but, and this will take the first two years of this project. Then we're supposed to assemble all the expertise at our center. And this will be important because uh, we will really have patients there with the biopsies and we, we will be able to make a sort of pipeline uh, going from the page, from the diagnosis of the patient to how we can treat them. And there is a, a further step because this is, uh, let's say, a dream that I had while I was writing Flamingo, you know, because we don't know if we will succeed. Obviously, uh, research is, we, we try to do our best. We have an idea. We need to change uh, on, the, on the way. But uh, if we succeed, uh, my dream is to, to, start, to, to um, uh, start a startup uh, because this will really uh, take the results of the project to the market because, you know, the first and more uh, obvious uh, impact of this project uh, is uh, for the research. So we will demonstrate uh, that uh, our, uh, joint on chip is feasible, that it works, uh, that it can be done also by pay on patient sample. But this, okay, it's important if you work on joint, you know, it's important not only for rheumatoid arthritis, but also osteoarthritis, which is another big uh, disease impacting a lot in Europe, okay? Um, but I think that, the, that there are much more impacts that if we are able to take to the market will be important. For example, we can make a joint on chip and we can, it can be useful also for the pharma. You've got a new drug, instead of testing it in animals or in a 2D layer, you can use this. It can be useful for the clinics because in my mind, in 10 years, the hospital will use the, the personalized organ on chip to test the drugs, to make the diagnosis, you see? So I think that uh, we, I, I hope that we will succeed in what uh, we plan. It's very ambitious, but uh, we've got lots of uh, good experts uh, from Europe. And so I'm confident. Yeah. 
it's it's really nice. Like first you have from all over Europe experts, and then you will try to bring it all closer and maybe do it on small scale. But then you also have an ambition to basically scale it up for all the three million of of patients yeah. who suffer from rheumatoid arthritis to to have that access. Would be great. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely the the personalized and precision medicine are the future probably of of medicine. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we will get there. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Annalisa, it's my pleasure. to take time today to speak to me. And as I said before, we will do more webinars as part of Flamingo project. Uh, we will present the 3D bioprinting. We will talk about lab on a chip and maybe some other things um, that, that are part of this big project and of these topics that deal with different organs on a chip and, and the future of medicine, as I said already. So if anyone, I didn't see any questions in the chat. I hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something new today and i hope you will follow our projects also in the future as annalisa already said uh, we are now more in the beginning phase so we have two or three more years to develop it and i'm sure we will talk again with annalisa uh, at another webinar and present our prog i mean your progress you're doing most of the research i'm just i'm just happy to be <laughs> part of it and to communicate with others what's happening so so i'm i'm looking forward to the to the next stages of this project and thank you so much for for taking time bye bye thank you very much bye